All right, hey there, Sam with you. Tuesday, April 24th, uh, finishing up on the polling that we did here today. Next up, uh, per member request is the uh, Icon ICX to Bitcoin. Here, I've got it on Binance where all the trading is. So we, we've looked at this coin before. So you, you can see here, we're, we're very, very high scores here. So if, oh, I always tell you 50 or higher here on their metric scale. We're at 63, good development activity. A lot of trading here, almost no trading to the dollar. So the bulk of it is to Bitcoin here and Bit Binance has the majority of it. So we, we can see that reflected here. So we're gonna look at it on, on Binance, of course. That's where all the volume is. So we come over here and we can see we've had we've gone through our, we, we've had the five wave structure on the way up and then we've gone through this nice deep correction. A few things I've wicked off here just of note, this, this has been a significantly important pivot here. We can see it come in, came into play. This is, and this is just a good example here, resistance becoming support, support becoming resistance. Just it, it tends to continue like that. So next time we come up to that level, that's that you certainly would wanna be aware of it. So that's just a quick wicking off of that level, good idea. So if we look down here now, so th this, this, this this pivot here, so we can look here, this was, so if we go down, uh, sorry. So if I pull from my high here to my low, we don't quite make the 50 here. So potentially a front run. So, you know, you got they could have used one down, they could have used this one here. So one, two, they might've used this pivot. Here we are to the 50, we get it to the tick. We actually get a little bit through it. Hard to know what they used here, but Either way, the, the dominant swing high to swing low, we want to pay attention to that 50 and that 618. Should we uh, start to approach them, we just, again, it's not that we can't get through, it's just that we want to know that they're there. So coming off of this low here, and we can see there's good subdivision here. Likely we finish this with a five, with a mode, pardon me, with an impulsive wave, one, two, three. Mm. Yeah, we don't have any, so looks like one, two, three, four, five. And now coming off of this here, we get our significant pivot here as we get the big push up, down we go, higher, low, right? Now we've just taken, oh boy, that just barely getting a higher high. Interesting, so let, let's, let's, now let's look here. So we go, if that's one, two, we know a two can go as deep as the 786, right? We're looking for between anywhere from the 50 to the 786. We're kind of right in between the two, so it certainly plays as a one-two. Well, here, here's the algo target here, in, interestingly, coming in right at that pivot, or the, this, this zone here, we'll call this here, relative to this initial high, where we've seen it tapped, tapped. Now, isn't that interesting? So will that, so you gotta look at that and think, oh, wait a minute, now, if, could the, if, that's, if this is a one-two, we gotta also pay attention to 100%. Well, interesting again here, there's 100% the length of the one projected from the two that would qualify it as a third. So we got to get through that resistance here that's been, you know, it's been, been a, a factor in the market's movement. So if we can get through that, then we know that we have the contender here for a one, two. We know the high probability target for a third is right up here at our one, six, one, eight and the negative 100. So we set up a, a potential roadmap here for a three, then we go down to the four. We don't know where that five is yet because we don't have enough to work with, but we do have a contender here as a one, two, and this will be significant as we come up and approach it. Can we get through? So looking now, we'd, we'd, we'd look at that and say, okay, as we approach here, this it, that wouldn't make for an ideal three. This would not be... That's not what you would want to see if you're a bull. We want to see it get through that and then maybe back to retest it on the other side. So something like that would be more ideal if we're going to get the bullish count to play. So a push through here to get to that wave three target, then a revisit back down to this support. Prior resistance potentially becoming the support. So we don't know. We don't know if we can get there. Now along the way, if we're going to go towards that three, this certainly could be a contender as a one, two. So this, this could be the one, it's you know, possible. Right? So you think, well, we're likely gonna hit some resistance there. So could that be a one, two? Well, then the whole thing has to move a bit to the right. So then potentially we go up for our three. So all of this kind of has to move over a bit. Still potentially now sets us up for that three, four, and then maybe there's another kick up for the five. So knowing that we're likely to hit that here, that's a potential roadmap as to how we end up getting there anyway. And we, we don't know what the subdivision it looks like, but that, that's, that's a contender there.
one, two, three. You know, we don't know what that looks like, but uh, you know, just uh, sort of the, the idea is kind of lay it out and say, okay, how could we get there? How could we get back and challenge those old highs? Well, here's one path of, of how we might get there with some significant levels here we're gonna have to get through and check and test along the way. So as it sits here right now, it, it, a potential double top, we, I certainly wouldn't encourage anyone to be a buyer there. Right, so at the very least, we'd want to wait for the next retracement for the next opportunity. And we don't know. Maybe this is a double top here. We don't know. So let's let's go off of the eight hour. Let's go down. Let's go all the way down to the one hour and dig into this move here. See what the subdivision offers to us. So potentially now I can see a one, two, like that. So that looks like. So let's let's see if we can map this out and see where where we could be going. So if I take that off, so this. Uh, we can take this. Yeah, let's take this off. This is up here. We can leave that on for now. So looking at this, it looks to me like I've got, given the depth of that retracement, that looks to me like this is likely my one, deep two. Well, we're going to overlap there. So that's three, four. Do we overlap? Yeah, looks like that's two, three, four. Interesting, right? So let's come back to that. Let's wick off that one. So we pay attention to it as poten potential for a one. Well, it looks like I get an A, B, and then I come down here for my C here. So looking at that, I'd want to just I'd want to check that if, if that plays as a one. If I can get that right on there. Well, that's certainly right in the sweet. So note here, we go right to the golden wave, right? Very, very common. We see the 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 just the straight rip down golden pocket. Right, in we go, back down, here's the C wave. We're between the 50 and the 618, and then we get the big push higher. So with that confirmed, let's get this right right on there. I'm not right on it. There we go. Okay, so one, two. Let's measure for that third. If this, this makes sense, is that a logical spot for that third? Down we go. So we pull it over. 1272, a square root of 1618. You know, it's possible. So here's another. We might have, uh, let's, let's check this. Here, here's a, here's an alternate, right? So potentially now we have a one, two, three, four, five in play. So, but what what else could it be? Are there any other alternates here? Well, we want to check for depth of retracement here. So looking at how deep that goes, I would want to check that as a contender for a two. So let's check it here. So the fact that it, we we don't overlap the proposed one here, and it looks like I've got a three, four, five. The fact that I don't overlap and that I come down exactly to the thirty-eight would suggest to me that that's a four, right? I get the A, the B, the C. I come down, I get a very technical pivot. I've got the Vegas wave, I've got prior structure. We don't overlap this. Looks to me, and where do we go? We get you know a few wicks through the algo target, but that looks to me like I've got a contender now for a completed five wave structure. Can't be absolutely sure about it, right? This could still move higher. But looking at that, I can. what else can I do? I can measure from the length of my one, projected for my four, look for any confluence or probable targets. Well, if we get through the 100, the 1272 is the next con next candidate for a pivot. We're kind of in between the two. You know, it's, it's it remains to be seen. <clears throat> so we put we got to so we got to pull out on that a little bit. Let's say let's go back to let's go to a 3 hour and think, okay, if that's completed and I've got this target up here for a third, well, what, what does that suggest to me? That I've got one, two, we may well have one, two already in. So this could be one wave of the third. So let's get that, let's get that degree down to a little bit something more manageable. Okay, so is that a contender here? So if this is one, two, now I can see I've got a five wave structure. Here's my target up here, what I'm hoping to get to for my third. I can take that off. So what would that suggest? If that's a completed five wave, that would play then as my one wave of my third wave. So expecting the two, come back down here, three, four, five, let's go up, let's go in blue, we'll go to <clears throat> submenuet. Okay, there we go. So there's a candidate for something that's showing good subdivision along the way. One, two, I've got a nice five wave structure potentially set up here for my for my completed one wave of my larger degree third wave here in white. So what are we looking for now? We're looking for the two wave relative to this completed one. So anything down here. So the, interesting, I've got this 
potential resistance, but setting up there for some support. I know it's a, as it's a two wave here, I'd be playing this as a two. The anticipated entry level here is between the 50 and the 618. That's our hot spot. That's what we're looking for. That's our entry zone. So it would be a front run potentially on the 50. So let me go down to a one hour. And here's how I would propose that we trade this. So on the assumption that that's in, right? And we, we want we, what we want to see to confirm it, we want to see a lower high. So we need the A wave, the B wave that fails to get to a new high. That's ideal. And then we push down for a two down here. So let's get these absolutely spot on. All right, any help from market geometry here for me? So we, we, we know we, if we've got a good one, two, we absolutely want to check it. Well, that's kind of interesting. So look what we do here. So we go, so here's our, here's our, our pivot here. So our, our corner pocket, here's the first tap of the median line. Up, we hover back lower parallel, back up, hover, we get the upper parallel. So the geometry would imply, and what do we do on the retrace? Come back down, tap the median line. So we can't be absolutely certain. There is no certainty in trading, but we can lay this out as a contender here for a completed one wave. So what we're looking for, we've got to look and say, well, how do we get down there? How can we get there? Well, we've got to set this up. So here's our roadmap of a one, two, three, pardon me, of an ABC to get us down to complete our two wave here to set us up for the big one. The one that we're always looking for is the three of the three. So if this, let's take this up. We can go up a degree. Let's go up here so it's a little easier to see. And let's put the wave on that, All right? So that's, so now if I pull it out, let's go back to our three hour. Okay, roadmap. That's all I've got is a possible roadmap of how I could get there. Here's, here's my, next entry zone I'd be waiting for. So in, as far, in my view here, there is no trade at the moment. There is just a hurry up and wait for the idea that this will come back down, put in a second wave for us down here, which sets up the third of the third, right? So third of the third of this degree. How can we get there? So do you see it? One, two. So of the larger degree, we're all, again, as I try and show this to you, I put the wave on here so you can kind of see the pieces getting put together. So there's my one, two, one, two, three, four, five, setting up as a contender now for my third of the larger degree. Four and then five, and then we go up here, and now we're back up challenging the old highs. So that's what I see. Now, if we come down here, of course, we have to draw a new pitchfork here because this is only relative to this count here that we have on the smaller degree. So of course, we'd look at the one, two. We'd be looking at this one. I know this just gets, come here, this gets hard to see, but there's that. So too far, we're too far, the time factor doesn't work, so I've got to go to a modifier. So I would start, I'd look at the shift, see what that does for me. Interesting, that might might be a contender for coming deep on the four. So that's an option for us. But I'd also want to be looking at the modified shift as well, essentially a channel. So th those are, you know, you can't, you don't have enough data to really be confident in what you have there yet. But I'm just showing you that's the layering that we would do. Once we complete, then we take off the smaller. So if I go back to the one hour, we take off the smaller pitchfork. And now defer to the larger pitchfork here of that one, two. So this one would come off and we let's get these waves off. I just want to try and put that together for you so you can see the idea behind it, building that roadmap. If we're going to get there, how do we get there? What's a roadmap that would get us there? If that's a one, here's my buy zone. How am I getting down there? How, what, what's the likely path? Does it make sense? Does it scale? Does it have the right symmetry? That's, that's the idea behind all of this. Can I put together a roadmap knowing that most of the time it's going to do something other than what I'm laying out here? The market has a funny way of, you know, again, it's a constant battle of you're in there trading against professionals trying to take your money. So they're not gonna make it easy for you. So this is where we use the Elliott Wave to try and get a handle on where we are, where are the algos, what are they doing? Well, we can see here from swing low, if that's a swing high, we come down here, here's their first target. 
right? Well, that wouldn't make sense. That wouldn't be a it wouldn't make sense as a one, two, three. It's too shallow. So maybe that's the one wave of our third wave. Remember, it's a constant process of trying to get the wave subdivision right so that you can reduce the risk and look for those lower lower risk, but with all the potential reward in place. So use a minimum target of three to one is what I use as a minimum. So can we find those little spots where we can tuck in and find an entry that's in sync with the larger degree movement? Our larger degree here is in white, one, two. If that's a one wave of that third wave, then this is an opportunity for me to get into that with a modest amount of risk because I'm going to buy at the I'm going to buy be, start my buying at the 50 and continue to buy down to the 618 stop on the other side of the 65. If I get stopped out, well then maybe this count is wrong or maybe I've got to rethink it as we come down to the 786 if we're going that deep. Here's the high probability zone, so I'm going to start with so if you might you might think of it this way, if you've got x x percent of your account to put into the trade, I'd put 50% of that in at not 50% of your entire account, 50% of the amount of capital that you'd put at risk here. So if you have two entries, first one's the front run on the 50, the second one is the front run on the 618. So this one has, so if we look here, the risk on the first one is right here from the 50 to the 65. The risk on the second one is much smaller because I'm a buyer at the 618, stops on the 65. So those line up, so first, first target is right here. All right, so this one, we've got what, three to one. This one looks like perhaps six to one. So just visually looking at that. So I'm taking more risk here. So the size needs to be smaller. I'm gonna look to add here. So potentially this all sets up to get us down here. If we get, we end up and we split the difference. If we tap the 618, our fill average will be splitting the difference of those two, which would put us right here about at this entry price. And we're just trying to get the first movement off of that to our first target, which coincidentally, look how we have the algo target in alignment with the median line, right? We don't know, but that's just, there. there's a nice potential roadmap. So we pull out on that. Well, that couldn't be the third. If this is one, two, that wouldn't be the third. But as I said, that could be the one, two of the third. So if we pull it out, let's go to the three hour, put that in context. Well, Right. That's not, that if this is one, two, that's not going to be our third down here. It's not long enough. We've got a target up here for the third, but that could be the one, two of that third. You see how we stack them all together? That's, that's the idea. So one, two, so potentially now, and this is where some time factor can kick in. So we come back down, maybe we check the lower parallel. Then we've got another kick up. Do we get the third? Do we get that? This is the key leg, of course, right? Do we get the third? Do we get one, two, three? Everything has to shift over a little bit depending on how long it takes to do it. Roadmap, nothing more, nothing more. And there, you, the key to it is that you will find yourself in positions where, where you, this is just following this textbook, right? It's not, it's not most of the time, in fact, most of the time, it won't do this. Right? So when you say, well, what's the point of it? Well, the point of it is that when it does follow and you have the map in advance, that's where you make your money. So that's what offsets all these little losers. So back down here, see little loser, put it, put it in context. How much am I risking here to get up to some of these upper targets? So you're just looking for that, where can I get in? Where can I get in and not risk blowing up my account with a small amount of risk to be there for all of this price action? You know, that, that's the whole point of this. Right? How can I get in with lower risk? Otherwise, you just buy and hold it. Right? Oh, great project, looks good, we're coming off lows, buy and hold. If you don't care about that retracement and you're just in for the long term, well then all of this is kind of a waste of time. But if you're trying to get yourself positioned here for low risk entries to participate where you can have six to one, eight to one, 15 to one kind of returns on that risk capital, then all of this is how you do it. You've, you've got to set these up. Where can I get in? What's the potential? Where is the resistance I'm likely to run into? Are those candidates for partial profits? Right, Because the roadmap isn't complete until we get up here and then we're only completing the third. If it's going to continue, right? you trade it until it fails. Until this breaks down, there is no reason not to continue to look for that to complete. I've got a good, I've, I've got all the ingredients are in place. 
So we trade it until it fails. It's as simple as that. What's a failure? So you say, if, if I got stopped out here on the 65, is that a failure? Nope. No, it's th this count doesn't break down until you break that pivot low. Right, we could easily go down here and have one. Two. This one went 78 between the 50, 618 and the 78. Right, this one went deep. We could have the same thing here before this, this kicks. Could be down here. So that's not a failure. That's just part of the process of trying to get positioned with a, a, a modest amount of risk. Right, if you reload down here, well, where's your pit? So you see, you do the same thing down here. So if you're buying at the 786, well, we can be real clear about where we're wrong. So that, that's your risk on that one. Targets have not changed. Right, take note of that. The, the wave three target ha has not, not moved. Right, so the only thing that's changed is you've taken one loser here, right, with good discipline. You've had, you've been stopped out. It goes down to the 786. Now you're risking to below the pivot because this count is not invalidated until we take out that pivot. Now we've got something else. Maybe this is ABC and we're going down again. All right, so that's that's the name of the game right there, putting together the roadmap and then trying to get positioned in there with low risk, trying to get all that upside. There it is. All right, guys, I'll wrap it there.